My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. The Online Safety Act introduced new offences which criminalise the sharing of or threatening to share intimate images, including deepfakes, without consent. Where individuals create these kinds of image using any kind of technology and share or threaten to share them online, they may be committing an offence. The Act will additionally give online platforms new duties to tackle this content by removing it, including where it has been created via AI apps. I thank my noble friend, the Minister, for his answer. My Lords, there has been a huge increase in the use of Nudify apps and the creation of deepfake porn since the Law Commission stated that they were less sure that the level of harm caused by the making of these images and videos was serious enough to criminalise. Does my noble friend, the Minister, agree with me that the making of these images and videos without a person's consent does in fact cause serious harm, regardless of whether a person is aware? And if allowed to continue, represents a very real threat to all women. Yeah. Um, well, let me let me start by, by acknowledging that, that the creation using AI or any other means of of um, intimate image uh, uh, deep fakes um, uh, that is abusive is deeply distressing to anyone concerned, um, and and. Uh, really very disturbing to, to all of us. Um, the the um, Law Commission consulted widely on this, um, looking at the process of taking, making, possessing, and sharing deepfakes, and their conclusion was that the focus of, of legislative effort ought to be on the sharing, um, which it now is. But that said, I think it is a fast-moving space. The capabilities of these tools are, are growing rapidly, and of course, sadly, the number of users is growing rapidly, so we will obviously continue to monitor that. My lords, my lords the, um, the applications engaged by the noble Baroness Lady Owen's excellent question are a dangerous and overwhelmingly misogynistic trend of non-consensual deepfake pornography, uh, and they are only developed because, and only able to be developed and distributed because of advances in AI. And they sit alongside the use of deep fakes for political disinformation and for fraud. Polling suggests public ambivalence towards AI, but near unanimity around deep fakes. 80% of people supporting a ban, according to a recent YouGov survey. That cloud computing and services hosting AI models are essential for deep fake creation, and that all major cloud suppliers have a presence in the UK empowers our government uniquely to enforce best practice. Would the Noble Lord the Minister agree that our regulatory system should ban them, and not merely ban deepfakes, but go further, imposing upon the developers a duty to show how and in what way they are applying existing techniques and restrictions, restrictions that could prevent their creation in the first place? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think a, a, an outright ban on the creation of, of any deepfake material presents um, a number of challenges, but I mean, obviously, I, I uh, applaud the sentiment behind the question. Um, where I think we're going with respect to deepfakes here, particularly those involved in intimate image abuse, is by, by very clearly um, putting in place the, the offence of sharing, whether that's part of the new intimate image abuse offences in the Online Safety Act that commenced just two weeks ago, or part of the coming criminal justice bill uh, shortly to come before Noble Lord's House, or indeed the existing child uh, sexual exploitation and abuse offences, um, it, it is very clear, and there are very severe penalties for the sharing of intimate image abuse uh, deep fakes. Um, but, but obviously it's a fast-moving space and we do have to continue to monitor it. My Lords, it is quite clear that uh, just simply uh, uh, banning the sharing of uh, these deep fakes is not sufficient. This is an issue which concerns us all, whether it's for um, sexual images, fraud, misinformation, my Lords. Um, can't the government overcome its reluctance to regulate AI, my Lords? What would, uh, what would persuade it, what evidence would persuade it to go further and make sure that the creators of these deep fakes uh, were liable, my Lords? Um, well, in terms of the overall regulation of AI, I hope, I hope Noble Lords have had a chance to peruse the governance um, response to the AI white paper consultation. 
And I think it makes the argument there very clearly that, that there will come a time when it, is, when it is right to legislate, to create binding rules on the, all creators of AI. Um, when that time comes, due to the policies we're putting in place, we will have uh, an agreed risk register informing us. We'll have uh, set up monitoring and evaluation techniques, again, gathering evidence. We'll have uh, working relationships with the AI labs. We'll have defined procedures for the creation um, of AI, and we'll have regulators trained to, um, to regulate AI within their own sectors. That means that when we do regulate AI, it will be done in a targeted and sophisticated way on the basis of evidence. My lords, my lords um, I think the government's being far too complacent on this issue. We, we warned during the passage of the Online Safety Act uh, about this, and we warned a number of times that, uh, because as the Noble Lord says, this is a fast-moving uh, technology, that the government needed to get ahead of the game. So, my lords, given the proliferation of these ghastly images and the appalling impact it has on people's lives, doesn't the noble Viscount the Minister now agree that neither the emergence of these apps nor their misuse is surprising? Uh, and if that is the case, why didn't the government broaden the scope of its amendment when it, amendments when it had the opportunity? And will he now look for ways in which we can plug the gaps that are clearly emerging? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I mean, as, as the Noble Lord says, it is a fast-moving space, and that requires an adaptive, agile response to, to legislating for it. And I think that's the, that's the approach that we're taking. Um, as, as to the argument that, that you know, we can now see it's not working, I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, the, the intimate image abuse uh, offences uh, actually commenced on the 31st of January, so two weeks ago. I'm pleased to see that yesterday we actually had our... Uh, first uh, cyber flashing conviction against that. But I do think uh, using an evidence base looking forward, um, we have to consider carefully what's working before um, we go ahead and, and implement further bans. My Lords, um, last Assembly election in Northern Ireland, uh, two female candidates from either side of the community in Northern Ireland were targeted with deep fake porn, which was solely designed to damage their chances in that election. The Noble Lord, the Minister, told us about the number of people that will be going to the polls over the next year. Surely uh, the Noble Lord and indeed the Government needs to work with the Electoral Commission to raise this issue, because it is a very important issue in democracy for female candidates. Um, look, I absolutely agree, and, and the, the instance that the Noble Lady describes is absolutely deplorable. Um, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say two things very briefly. One is that the sharing that she describes um, has a, has a base, as a base offence carries uh, up to six months in prison now. And if that, as in the case uh, that, that the noble lady put forward, is, is, is designed for purposes of malice uh, or indeed of gaining sexual gratification, that sentence then goes up to two years. Um, uh, and that, that regime is now live. In terms of elections, we, we have, of course, set up the Defending Democracy Task Force with a new unit implemented last year specifically dedicated to safeguarding the election against these kinds of threats. My Lords, my Lords, Lady Owen asked a very forensic and specific and nimble and agile and all these adjectives that the Minister keeps using question. Why not ban these new Defy apps? Why not ban the tools of the trade, the yeah. wicked trade, rather than waiting for individuals to misuse it? What is the positive use of this? Is it that big tech is now so deep into our politics that we don't dare regulate this technology and make sure that it isn't used for ill? Well, the reason that the making is not banned is because the, the sharing is banned. And the reason we've done that is because the Law Commission uh, as set out very clearly in their document, made the argument that that was the most appropriate way to have a coherent and effective body of law preventing the deplorable misuse of technologies in this way. My lords. Bishop, it would be very helpful if the Minister could explain, if I heard you correctly, you said that um, for sharing it there's a six-month ban, but for malicious sharing it could be up to two years. Could you explain what the non-malicious use is? <laughs> Well, there's, there's, there is a base offence in the law of, of sharing uh, intimate images um, without consent or without the reasonable belief in, in consent. Now, that can extend to 
two years if the intent is to cause alarm, distress or humiliation. It can also extend to two years if the purpose is to gain sexual gratification. And, crucially, uh, it can go to two years. There's a, a, an offence of threatening to share these materials that also carry a two-year penalty.